Hello everyone, this is Lucas and what you're looking at here is my motor bicycle tire and I don't know if you can see those, those are the threads right there, right there. You can see the nylon threads coming through on the tire here and here. It's just poking right through. And this is coming off the back of my power bicycle and I changed this tire back in July and it is now September and I had to change it out because well you add air you start to add too much air all the time and then you know your tires just expanding because you're losing so much rubber that the tires able to inflate a little bit more and that's usually because you got a lot of this nylon here starting to become exposed and as you can see and this tire was sitting so flat like if you look at it it's so flat there's no curvature to that tire at all and this came off the back of my motor bicycle here and just giving you an update on the motor bicycle so it's september i'm still running the same kit and we had our first major failure today on the kit and i was expecting it so it wasn't such a bad deal i got everything lined up to get it fixed and all that stuff um i knew it was going to go but uh, i decided to run it out as long as i could and i'm just glad it ran out where it did i just was going to the quick corner store and it gave out and that was perfect um i was able to ride it home and i put some new tires on it today these uh tires here they come off of um uh a huffy uh, these are huffy tires but i decided to put them on this frame just because i had them and they were new and they're street tires and they got a lot of curvature to them so the engine doesn't have to work as hard um to try to turn the knobbies on pavement um, knobbies on pavement just don't seem to work that good with me. Um, yeah, I want a little bit more speed if I can get it, and this is one way to do it. So this is what I did. But when I first built this bike, I didn't have this option. Um, things have been looking up. You know, I got a, a locker the other day I bought, and it had a bunch of bikes in it, a bunch of parts. So I've been uh, putting together a whole bunch of bikes. That's why I've been really busy. I haven't been on YouTube much. And just kind of uh, selling those on Kijiji and just trying to keep away and, you know, keep safe with the COVID stuff going on and keep away from people and just kind of do my thing. And uh, it's kind of hard to make a buck now, but you know how it is. But, uh, yeah, I know I saw this coming. I did a big teardown on the bicycle, um, the power bike, two days ago. Um, I tore off the uh, clutch lever assembly and um pulled everything out changed the grease re-greased everything put everything back together and uh i can see the transfer gear it was uh, the drive gear is looking really really chewed up because you know it's been getting a lot of use i've burned a hundred dollars in gas i figure already through this that's a lot like this thing has went really far if not more yeah i've burned a lot of gas through this thing maybe even close to 200 since I got it and um, but I've run really really far this is my third set of tires this year for this summer I've burnt through a set of knobbies already once um, for my spring so in springtime I went through a set it's a summer set it's my fall set and I got up here my winter set and one of those is a studded one I got a studded Nokia in there but um, I'm looking to get another one because I had one of these uh, 10 years ago and I had fully studded Nokia and winter tires on it. Man, that thing went anywhere. So I hope that's the plan again this year, you know, to have that. So, yeah, things are, things are good. So what happened was the master link on this went and the master link on this wasn't very, very good from the very beginning. I didn't really like it. Um, wasn't as beefy as the ones I saw that come with other kits. I don't know. I just like some things I think they change over the years with these things and they just kind of do things differently or make things differently or get them from different people. Some, some things like the double clamp on these ones here. Yeah. Great idea. Um, things like that cheap master link. Yeah. Not such a good idea. Um, I will say that that nylon roller, that tensioner at the back. This one here, and I've had them on other ones too, and I don't know how people complain about these things. But really, this is the reality of the situation with these bikes. When you're riding this bike, if you're not riding it like you'd ride a 10-speed, you're going to wreck it. And that's just how it is. 
when you're riding a 10 speed you don't ride a 10 speed and do massive jumps on a 10 speed unless you're when you land you land absolutely perfectly well on this you don't even do that like you don't even try to do that there are jumps on a 10 speed i can do that i can't do on this so i ride this kind of like a 10 speed and then i'm not doing jumps everybody i know that runs into problems with these things is because they're under power and they're doing jumps Whenever I'm going over curbs or whenever I'm doing anything like that that requires me to be doing something like jumping or hopping, I like to hop curbs and stuff like that still on this, but I don't do jumps and I don't do jumps under power. I just do them under leg power and I can get the front end of the bike up enough that I can pop the back end up and not worry about harming the bike or jolting anything or anything like that as long as I am got my clutch pulled in and I'm not under power now everybody I know that has problems with these tensioners it's the same story man it's because they're jumping or they're doing some other kind of crazy crap under power or maybe they hit something bad under power now I've hit some pretty crazy potholes under power and crazy potholes have like taken out entire back rims I had this summer when I changed out my tires to these ones was when these ones were still nice knobbies and these were brand new these still had knobs on them like the little factory nubbies things on the sides of them when I put them on when I changed these out it was because I folded a back tire it had a little bit of a wobble in it I want to see how long I could go but I hit a really really bad pothole like really bad pothole it folded my whole back tire so that kind of forced me to change into my uh, summer tires so because just did it because I had to at the time but yeah I had to redo the whole back tire rebalance the whole sprocket in the back and everything else and but I've done it before it's not a big deal and uh the tire wasn't good to begin with it already had a wobble I was just trying to figure it out see how long it would last all that kind of stuff but uh yeah today the master link went from the chain the chain on this thing is like done this nylon roller I can't believe is still going like it is like I look at it now and I'm like, man, I could probably get like a lot of more life out of that nylon roller yet. Like, I think it's not even like partly done compared to the chain, which is just kind of makes my head spin that, that that would be that tough, but it is. And uh, everything else has been pretty good. I haven't made too many um, uh, modifications on the bike. Um, I did find some shock forks, which have taken out a lot of uh, the... Uh, front end shake i guess um i put on a really really big saddle on the back it looks kind of stupid um it looks like something you'd find like in an old exercise bike or like old 80 bike but seriously those springs and everything it takes so much shock out of the ride um that it is really nice it has actually a really nice ride now um it doesn't shake as much as it did before when I had everything straight up, right? Um, when you have everything straight up, everything's just shake and to hold on to these things is like, it's, it's, it's definitely dampened everything down and it does take a lot of the shake out of the whole bike and hole. So, I mean, you don't have bolts shaking loose as much as you do when everything's like solid framed and solid forks and, you know, you got solid seat with not a lot of spring in it and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of shake and that does transfer into your fittings and they do shake loose. Like I've said in my other videos that these things are more like airplanes than they are a bicycle. It's um, every so many hours you got to tear things down. Now when I tore apart, I mean, in my tear down for the back chain and everything, I noticed right away that the master link was a little bit it was gonna go it had like wearing grooves and all this kind of stuff in it and what I did was I turned it backwards because I knew it was gonna snap probably right away so what I did was I turned it backwards the other way around to change the flow of what how the um, the uh, master link was running before so that the wear point would change on the chain and I get just a little bit more life out of it because I just needed to make a few more runs and darn it if it wasn't enough and I got all my runs done today and uh have this thing snap like just that on the way back from the beer store that's not such a bad deal so i knew it was going to go and that couldn't went couldn't have went in an easier place so we're, we're thankful for that but yeah i got the new rubber on and um yeah it's hoping to be a really good fall here and uh 
yeah, hoping to be a really good winter here with the uh, winter tires. I uh, haven't had the fat bike out too much. Um, trying to work out some stuff right now. I got a huge 48 volt lithium ion battery, but the fat bike is 24 volts. And I'm hesitant to plug the 48 volt into the 24 volt motor because the 24 volt motor is supposed to be only rated 12 to 24. And if I had another one, I wouldn't be so concerned about frying it, but I am. So um, I haven't hooked it up to this one yet. I want to get something bigger anyways. This, this for the size of the battery that I got, it's a salvage battery that I was able to fix. Um, yeah, I need something bigger. I need like a, you know, really high wattage, um, maybe hub motor or something like that. I, I don't know. I gotta like look around, I guess, see what I can find that way. But, uh, yeah, I definitely want to build another one here. I got a DC, a big DC, um, electric lawnmower engine that I'm looking at installing in a bike frame here. I know I can get it to work. I just know I can get it to work. I don't know why. I made the fat bike work. Heck, I can get it to work, right? And I figure it's going to have like not really high torque, but it'll have like a high top speed, which will be nice, which is exactly what kind of what you want, especially if I do like a belt drive setup or something like that, which is something else that I've been looking at getting for um, the gas bike as per an idea from um, someone I know. Um, and I don't know, I've been looking at the, ga the belt drive kits and all this kind of stuff and yeah i'm still on the fence about it just because i know the chain cuts and i know that they work in the alignment and all this kind of stuff and the belt drive kits i don't know about the alignment you're still going to have to have a tensioner there somewhere so i don't know is the tensioner going to work well it's probably going to work better with the belt it's definitely going to be quieter um definitely going to be a quieter bike with the belt so i don't know maybe it's something i'll check out i gotta check out here a couple things but um, yeah, I got a whole bunch of bikes I got to sell in the other unit. I'm going to make a video here um, in the other unit. I'm just making this video to catch up and showing you guys, you know, length of power bikes and how long these things last. So like I said, I put a lot of gas through this thing. This thing has ran me from the time I built it with the Newcastle Ale to here now in September. And the first thing to ever go on it, you know, after keeping it under really good condition, you know, taking care of it. You know, I run sea foam through it once in a while. Um, I like to run it dirty on the oil mix. Um, I've always ran them dirty on the oil mix just because a lot of the parts in these um, engines aren't exactly, you know, they're close, but sometimes they're a little off and all that kind of stuff. So that little extra oil, you know, it, it helps fill the gaps and uh, I'll give you that little bit of extra torque. I find anyways. Um, I'm running, I think, about, uh, I don't know, anywhere between 25 to 1 to 30 in one. But I don't know. Um, Lucas Oil Synthetic and this one doesn't seem to work as good. I mean, it does if you really dilute it. But at that point, I, I don't, I'm not running it as thick as I want which is it doesn't seem to work as well i don't know i just find that if i really get really really cheap oil like the clean flow clean flow works really well in this like i've had no issues with clean flow but these uh really advanced synthetics and stuff like that it just doesn't seem to like it i don't know maybe it's me maybe i'm not getting my mixes right maybe i gotta change everything for all that kind of stuff but i really don't want to change everything um clean flow is cheap you know, I have no problems with it. And the Canadian Tire brand two cycle oil is just as good as Clean Flow. Like, I have had no issues with either one of them. And they're both like bottom of the market stuff. But this isn't a high end two stroke, right? There's not any balancing or anything like that. I didn't port this, I didn't do anything like that. You know, you don't need to do anything like that. They will run out of the box as is. You know, and the, your kit, everything that you get in your kit, as long as you install it on the right bike, will run out of the box as is for a long time. Like, yeah, like I said, I had my last one I had for three years. And I think I went through two or three chains. I think I went through about three chains. And I haven't put half. I think this one here, I've probably put more miles on this one here 
then I did my last one all combined. Uh, I'm pretty sure. But my last one I'd lend out too, right? Like I used to take it to like up north and all kinds of stuff and let other people ride it too. So it's it got a lot of abuse, but this one here hasn't gotten a lot of abuse, but I've got a lot of runtime. Like I've I've put a lot of K on this thing and it's eaten a lot of gas and it's been extremely reliable. Um provided that you do the proper tune-ups and stuff like that every every day i'm looking at it with this thing you gotta look at at least 15 minutes every day out of your time and if you're not doing it every day then that's going to accumulate forward right like if i didn't tear apart all this stuff right now i wouldn't have been prepared for this chain break because i knew it was coming right i i knew it was coming but you know, I needed to get all my running around and everything done first. That was kind of important. I was running around for parts to fix other bikes to make more money to fix this bike and da 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 How the story goes, right? So anyways, if you like this video, give us a th thumbs up and subscribe. And I'm just uh, letting everybody know how things are going. And uh, if you got a power bike out there, uh, I hope you guys are having a blast this summer because it's been uh, pretty good for that kind of stuff because you know you keep staying away from people and you're going all over the place all right take care